2024 has been a pretty crazy ride and you guys have been DMing us like crazy on all these different welding challenges this past year. So we're going to go over three of these goofy challenges and show you the secret sauce to get them done so that you can impress your friends this New Year's. Okay, so it looks like one of the first challenges. This one right here is a freaking classic. The razor blade challenge. This is where we say, nana nana boo boo, I can TIG weld better than you, dude. And we're gonna try to get two razor blades to TIG weld together. But stick around, because we are gonna add a little twist that is a viral video from this past year, and we're gonna try to attempt to stick weld this as well. Check out this video from Chris from Wobros. We're gonna see if we can get it to happen too. All right, getting started, looking at the machine, we're gonna be using the old stallion, the Everlast Typhoon for all of these fun little experiments. Now we're gonna start on DC TIG. We're gonna use our foot pedal. We're gonna have that high frequency start. We're gonna be running at only about 20 amps. It's obviously super duper thin. And then we're gonna be having a number 12 FUPA cup on here with this flex lock with this outlaw leather handle with the outlaw leather hood. I'm using a fixed shade lens today. The reason why I wanna use a fixed shade lens is for the fact that at low amperages sometimes auto dark hoods like to flash and we're gonna be working at really low amps. Then of course you're gonna need your razor blades. Now you can run these little razor blades. They're really super duper thin. These are some that I got off Amazon and let me tell you, they're challenging, they're pretty thin. If you're really trying to show off for your friends and succeed on the first time, maybe try getting some of these other razor blades as well as using something as a backer to suck some of that heat up. If we don't have that backer, we're usually gonna have some problems as far as blow through, and when that weld blows out, it's just kinda like, oh, I kinda can weld razor blades together. The other thing is your filler is your chiller. That's gonna help you from blowing through is adding a little bit of filler, but we need a tiny wire, so some 045. I've got some heavy duty razor blades, and we're gonna line them up on this backer piece, edge to edge. And then we're gonna come in and tack the corners, and make her beat. Now outside of just soaking these uh, guys in acetone because they came kind of oiled up and wiping them off with a rag, that's all the prep that we did to this. We're gonna try to not put any overlap in it so that we can really get some complete joint penetration. Not that it'll be that hard, but we're not gonna cheat the system here and we wanna play fair and we're gonna do edge to edge with these razor blades and not have any lap in them. 20 amps, again, you're gonna probably wanna start on this backing piece and move into the actual blade itself. The other problem is I suck. You move that razor blade, it's not really great. You'll notice even at 20 amps, that little edge from that razor blade will wanna, it blows away pretty easy. I'm all the way down on that 20, on the edge there, little post flow, go to this other side. You might wanna have that wire ready because that little point it's just gonna wanna run away. But this isn't a really hard weld to make. The biggest thing is you keep a pretty up and down angle and you just ease into that foot pedal. And when you have a puddle, just make sure you carry it. And if it looks like it's sinking, make sure you dab just a touch of wire. And we're off to the races. I'm full down on this foot pedal at 20 amps. That cold aluminum on the back side is not gonna let it stick. And it's keeping me from blowing a big old hole. And again, we're just DC negative TIG. Oop, got a hole at the end. Could have been backing up that foot pedal. You really don't need to be a pro. You just gotta know how to weld some thin stuff. And it does translate really well practicing this little this little dumb little party trick, if you will, practicing that right there will really tone in your skills on welding thin stuff. Because it's likely if you are welding thin stuff, you are gonna be having some sort of copper or aluminum backer. It really does help. All the way through, baby. First try. It does take some practice. Obviously, I fancy myself a TIG welder, so I should be able to accomplish this. But there was nothing fancy that we did on this Typhoon except set it for straight 20 amps, high frequency start, and foot pedal. You could play with all the pulse settings and probably make this even a more achievable or prettier or easier weld, whatever it may be. We're gonna try something a little bit different. We're gonna switch this thing over, get it on stick mode, and we're gonna try to stick weld some razor blades with some of these rods that I found at the weld supply. Easy strike. I don't know, that sounds like a like a startup brick for a fire. Probably gonna have to turn it way down on the amperage. The viral clip of Chris doing the razor blade challenge with stick, he had his machine, he had his little dinky machine on zero because it's still 
welded at a few amps. This goes at a minimum of 10 amps. Those rod recommend minimum of 20. We're gonna go to the minimum and see what happens, right? These easy strikes are 16th of an inch diameter electrodes, so they're pretty teeny tiny. We're gonna try to do the same thing, except this time we're gonna, we're gonna tack them together with TIG, and then we're gonna stick weld them. We've got the hot start all the way down. We've got the arc force all the way down. We've got the amperage as low as it'll go. Got our little tiny sparkler in here. Smells like 6013, but who's to know? Let's try this out. <laughs> what is this nonsense? Oh my goodness, that was, uh, I think I need a little bit more amperage, but let me get like a hot start in there, like a, a, a schmidge. I'm having a hard time not blowing a hole. It'll fill itself back in a little bit, thanks to that aluminum on the backside. I think I need a little bit more amperage, believe it or not. Let's try its 20 amps. Little faith. Oh, that's Action Jackson. Oh, there's holes. Move faster? Nope. No, nope, just messing that one up. We uh, switched the polarity over and we did bump it back down. So let's see now, since we're gonna have to requalify this here procedure, we need to sit flat so that aluminum does its thing. Oh yeah, baby. Hold your breath. Don't let it know your next move. Success! I think I saw a pinhole or two, but just stick welded some freaking razor blades together. Check that out. Even got a little little peeler on there. There at the end, it looks like I've got a couple bits of elongated porosity, but oh man, complete joint penetration. Stick welding razor blades with a tiny little sparkler. If anyone says, you can't stick weld razor blades, say phooey. All I need is DC positive, a lucky strike. What are they called? Easy strikes. That's all you need, some a little bit of a backer there. Let's move on to the next challenge. Now as far as stick welding thin metals, man, that's a really handy little trick that you have there. If you can stick weld razor blades together, I'm sure you can figure out a way to stick weld some sheet metal if you had to. It looks like the next thing is another classic. If you can't tell by now, we're gonna be TIG welding some aluminum cans. It really is very difficult. Uh, I've done this attempt many times and have failed many times and have succeeded very few. What it really boils down to, just like any other aluminum project, is your prep. What do we know about aluminum? It has that heavy oxide on it, so we wanna start by cleaning it. This being some monster cans, be sure to rinse it out because if you hit a pocket of that nasty sugar, it's just gonna contaminate your weld and you'll be welding along and then boom, all of a sudden it's super nasty. So that's probably why it's not clean. The other thing is I'm gonna take one of these Scotch-Brite discs from 3M and I'm gonna run it around the side of a can. It's just enough to get the paint off of the can so that we can get a good ground through the can. If not, we're gonna probably pop a couple holes in it. That arc will wanna wander around if it doesn't have a good ground and it makes it really difficult being that the sidewalls of this can are really thin. And we're gonna aim for this little heavy rim on the bottom here. We popped a hole in the bottom of another can because if those pressures build up, it'll blow your weld out too. And then we can come over to the machine. We're gonna go over to AC TIG, obviously. Balance at about 30. Our AC frequency at about 365. That's how many days of the year we just finished up and that frequency is gonna focus a tighter arc. And that's the main reason why we're doing it. We're about 30 amps. High frequency foot pedal, all that good stuff still in it. We're gonna be using this little trough that I made, a little homemade trough to keep everything nice and lined up for us to tack and weld. Got some 332 filler metal. I'm gonna have something to rest my hand on. Or at least I prefer to. I'm gonna put a tack on her. Kinda get that filler metal in there first, get a nice ball of filler. And then you can kind of press down on that foot pedal a little bit more. We're barely on that foot pedal at 30 amps. Put that tack there. Roll it all the way around. Pretty much staying on top of things. Now that we got tacks on it, we're going to pretty much stay on those tacks and 
I don't really want to see any kind of penetration. I just want to get a weld over top of this crack. Full foot pedal, back off. Full foot pedal, back off. Got a 332 size tungsten. I didn't change the sharpening on it at all. I didn't ball the tip, I didn't blunt the tip. Kept it the same thing as we just had for everything else. And I'm pretty much always gonna be welding only like an inch at a time. Really hoping that arc doesn't wanna wander off to those side walls. Because once you pop a hole in it, it's pretty much game over. But just like I said in the razor blade challenge, your filler is your chiller. As long as you have your filler metal there, you should be able to pull it off. Starting to sound a little raspy. Looks like we're getting past it though. What this really will boil down to is making sure you have clean aluminum, and you're fluttery with that foot pedal. I gotta quit talking and finish this thing. Now welding aluminum cans is honestly kind of stressful. This is my first attempt here. And the biggest difference between these two and the reason why this one looks so crummy is I didn't put any prep into this or I put very little prep into it. I didn't clean the cans. I just tried to slap them together and weld them. This one I treated it as if it was made out of aluminum and it welded a lot better. The last trending thing that we saw in 2024 was welding glass what am i kidding this isn't even a real phone welding glass bottles to steel can it be done i've seen some successful looking videos and some failures so we're gonna give it a go got my machine set back to stick welding mode i've got my, my glass bottle here some of this delicious seltzer grapefruit dude this is honestly a shameless plug i think we have to prep this material and not only does these scotch bright wheels take off some paint off of a, a thin aluminum can but it can also just shred in the mill scale, rust. These things are pretty awesome. I mean, it's basically another alternative to kind of say your wire wheel, even for heavy plate. Got it set to DC positive 80 something amps. We're gonna start with a 7018. So I guess we'll just stick it on there, right? That's all it is. Uh, oh, classic. Damn. Well, that didn't hold. I need some more bottles. Another perk to the fiber disc is it takes off stickers off of glass really easily, so y'all can't tell me what kind of degenerate I am. So let's see if one of these bottles will hold up to it. I've seen people do it a couple different ways, but I've never, I don't believe that this is gonna end up holding up. Trying to weld fast. Felt like I cracked something there. Oh, damn. That one didn't work. Let's try the other side. Maybe just a little, little less time on it. One little tack. Oh, no. That one doesn't work. Good thing I prepared myself for plenty of different variety. I think this bottle's from Mexico. Nope. Oh! Well, it's cracked, but it's holding out. We're on to something. We're on to something. This has got to be it right here. This, this is how they do it. Damn. I thought I had it. Last go. Back to DC positive. Can do some downhilling. I'm not letting go yet. Not letting go yet. Oh, you hear that sound? They put a bead in, hand. Yes! Save yourself some bottles and just go ahead and start with the whiskey. I mean, the, the bigger bottles. That 5.9 there really held up. Does this help you at all to become a good welder? No. But it is one of those things where it's like, I bet you 20 bucks. Hey, and 20 bucks is 20 bucks. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Hey, cha! Oh, my lanta. This little wire on the floor. I can't pick it up. Oh, my goodness. I'm about to 
freak out. Dun, 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 dun. Little snackety snack right there. Mm -hmm. Quick, take a picture! 